Speaking of shiny new toys, this is decidedly not whatever Apple announced on Wednesday. It's your new PC. Yes, as you all know, last week we were waiting for Newegg to ship us the parts we ordered for my brand new gaming PC here. Well, they arrived late last week and we put the hustle on putting it together. Turns out the thermal take case was a better choice than we thought. Big and roomy with lots and lots of thumb screws. It's got a whole other extra panel here that we can add an extra fan if we so desire. So the machine is up and running. Let's take a look at how it runs. Now, one of the first things I did was check out the Windows Experience Index. Uh, yeah, not a real big yardstick to go on. And it really only really gives you an inkling of how your machine will do in Windows. But out of morbid curiosity, I had to check. Um, so my old gaming PC, you know, the big jet engine one, um, was a little on the low side. I mean, the processor came in at 5.9. The RAM was 5.5. The graphics for both Aero and the 3D came in at 6.9. And the hard disk at 5.2. So your overall rating, of course, then was a 5. 5.2 because the Windows Experience Index is rated exactly to the lowest and slowest component in your 5 machine. 5.2, which is not so hot. Um, <laughs> in La Machina Nuevo, wait, El Machino Nuevo? I, I think it's... Oh, my Spanish is terrible. Um, I got a 7.2 for both Josh. CPU and RAM, um, a 7.4 <laughs> for graphics, and a 5.9 for the hard drive. Sure, there's only a 0.7 difference between the old and the new hard drive, but man, is everything else way up, and that makes me a happy little lady. But like I said, the Windows experience isn't like a really great yardstick to measure a gaming PC by, so we turn to something else. That's something else being, of course, Crisis. Yeah, it's a little over two years old at this point, but it still comes in handy. Now, we ran the Crisis CPU test at 1600 by 1200 with all the eye candy cranked up and the eight times anti-aliasing, but with VSync off. Um, my old machine managed to average out at about 15.38 frames per second. Um, my machine now managed to squeeze out 23.58 frames per second. That's about a 53% improvement. Um, when we ran the Crisis GPU test with the same settings, my old machine averaged uh, 15.68 frames per second, while my newer machine here scored 21.36 frames per second. Well, a smaller boost, but still a 36% increase. Not quite the 30 frames per second that we would, of course, like to see, but we kind of expected that with it being an entry-level gaming video card. So I Thank gotta, you. There was some furious downloading going on this afternoon, just so you could get the <laughs> hands-on time with World of Warcraft. Did you, did you, was it, was it, did it change? Obviously, your first-person shooter gaming has just changed dramatically. I think we have the Left for Dead competitive left. advantage you were looking for. It'll help. I mean, I'm, I'm actually not sure what Roger's running. I know he's got a gaming laptop Roger's, that he uses, so. Roger's running 25. Roger's, Roger has more money tied up in his PC than I have tied up in my PC, and I've got at least $1,100 tied up in my PC now. It's the most expensive PC I've built in yeah, the last and decade. even in gaming PC terms, that's not a lot of money. Actually, twelve hundred dollars is a lot of money in gaming PC terms because both of us actually have SSD. Well, you know, twelve to fifteen hundred is actually you can build a lot of machine for twelve to fifteen hundred dollars, especially if you're not running an SSD drive, a solid state drive. Well. I think it's money well spent for me for spending six hundred dollars. I think we did pretty well for ourselves. I mean, some people in the forums had some suggestions on things we could have done a little bit differently, but you know. What, what would they like to see the most? Oh, I don't remember. You'll have to go ch check it up. There was like a couple <laughs> of posts about people being like, "Well, instead of doing this, you could have done this," and well, actually, and we're like, "Yeah, of course." There was a lot of different options when you're putting something together like this, but we picked the ones that we liked the best, and I, I'm happy with the result. And wow, it looked great. I downloaded Wrath of the Lich King today and I'm put it all together. I'm giggling because you guys can't see. It, but I can just see like your eyes. But I know the like, eye level right the... here. It's pretty funny. <laughs> it's pretty adorable. But You're like, like... That, what, what was that guy on Home Improvement's name? Wilson. Wil Wilson? Yeah, yeah, you look like Wilson from over there. <laughs> all right, well, anyhow, now that my gaming PC is all built, I need to start installing some games on this puppy, like our sponsors, Mass Effect 2. A sequel to the totally awesome space RPG Mass Effect, Mass Effect 2 follows the journey of Commander Shepard and his or her team as they seek to uncover who or what is behind the disappearances of entire human colonies. The odds are stacked against them, and Shepard's team isn't one that he can entirely trust. But if humanity is to be saved, Shepard and his crew must succeed in the fight for the lost. 
Having played through Mass Effect, uh, Mass Effect 2 has us totally stoked. From the visuals and fights to the super slick sci-fi atmosphere, Mass Effect 2 isn't just a game, it's an experience. So if you want to play the game that set the bar for space-based RPGs, you need to check out Mass Effect 2. It's out now for the Xbox 360 and PC. FYI, if you finish the first Mass Effect, keep your saved games. You'll be able to import them into Mass Effect 2, and then people will be like, oh hey, Shepard, how's it going? Remember me? You were a total jerk to me last time I saw you. Actually, not in my case. I always play good. I'm a sucker for it.